In June 2024, I went to Japan to find out more about the country's plans to tap more nuclear energy. Japan was ground zero for the most recent nuclear incident. In 2011, a massive earthquake and tsunami along Japan's Pacific coast caused the meltdown of reactors at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant and displaced over 100,000 people. Japan is not alone in its quest for nuclear energy, and many other countries are also looking to ramp up their nuclear fleets. So what sparked this nuclear renaissance? And can nuclear energy ever be safe? Hey Waltz! Oh hey, hi! hi. How's your flight? It was good, I had a whole row to myself. Oh, wow, that's cool. Well, shall we? Yeah. This is Walter Sim, SC's Japan correspondent who has been here since 2016. He knows the ins and outs of energy policy in Japan and will be joining us on this trip. We'll be taking the Shinkansen from Tokyo to Fukushima, where the disaster was the wake-up call for nuclear safety around the world. And while we're on this train ride, let me give you the big picture. Nuclear is considered a domestic source of energy, similar to renewable sources like solar and wind, but more stable since nuclear plants can still generate electricity even when it is cloudy or the air is still. Domestic production of electricity will help to buffer against market fluctuations in the price of fossil fuels like gas and oil, which happened in the aftermath of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and keep prices stable for customers. Burning fossil fuels is also the main driver of climate change. But while renewable sources can generate zero-carbon electricity, not all countries are blessed with the same access to these resources. Consider Singapore. More than 95% of the country's electricity comes from burning fossil fuels. But there are limits to how much solar energy it can harness. For example, solar energy now makes up around 2% of Singapore's energy needs. Even importing green electricity from solar farms in Indonesia or Malaysia is limited. And so Singapore plans to import about 30% of our energy from our neighbours by 2035. Japan too faces the same constraints in harnessing enough renewable energy, given its mountainous terrain. And this is where nuclear energy could come in. And just in time, we have reached our first stop. What you have been in Japan since 2016, right? So that was before all the concerns about energy and climate started to be entrenched in public consciousness. But since Fukushima incident happened in 2011, have you observed any change in people's apprehension towards nuclear as a form of energy? Yeah, I think sentiments are definitely changing and there is a difference in perception in Fukushima as compared to, say, elsewhere in the country where the concerns are very much different. I think it was a couple of years ago where there was a severe energy shortage and, and electricity bills totally spiked. And paired with cost of living concerns and all that, I, I think people came to realise that Nuclear energy is necessary if Japan wants to reduce its reliance on, say, energy imports from elsewhere, so long as there's proof that you know it's safe. Yeah. We spend the night in a nearby city to rest. Come morning, it will be a 50km drive south to Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. We're now at ground zero of the 2011 nuclear incident. Since then, TEPCO, or the Tokyo Electric Power Company managing the plant, has taken steps to control the radioactive fallout and protect the plants from future tsunami damage. We catch up with Mr. Kenichi Takahara, risk communicator at TEPCO, on the lessons that the disaster holds for Japan as it restarts its other nuclear reactors. This ですが、このことからですね、やはり我々はいろいろな知見を得たということです。
Hiroshima is still recovering from the incident, and there are signs and museums everywhere to remind people not to forget. Some residents have accepted the situation and even acknowledged that nuclear power may be necessary for the country. Some others, like Ryokan owner Tomoko Kobayashi, feel that Japan should first bank on alternative energy sources like renewables. While radiation levels in most areas surrounding the plant have now been reduced to safe levels, as evidenced by the dosimeters found around the prefecture, she is not taking the government's word for it. まだ測る場所があるのでね。そのリスクだって。40年持たせるのを、じゃあ 60年に持たせます。それがダメだからじゃあ新規作ります。処理できないものを増やすだけでしょう。私たちもいいよ。あと10年、あと何年かわかんないけど。でも若い人たちにとったら、それはすごい負担になるはず。まあ、どうなんだ
yeah, to the so especially energy sufficiency and also environment and also economic efficiency. Japan's energy mix policy target is 20 to 22 percent in the 2030, but the currently is so five or six percent is just a nuclear share last year. So it, we should revitalize nuclear energy's use with, of course, maximum safety. As we come to the end of our trip, we got a better idea of why Japan wants, even needs, to tap nuclear energy. It made me think of Singapore's own energy story as well, since we face similar challenges in tapping renewable energy and safeguarding our energy security. The impacts of climate change are already here. Extreme weather events and changing weather patterns are affecting lives and livelihoods and future generations would likely have it worse if we don't start acting today. Do we have time to wait until renewable energy technology catches up? And if not, does nuclear energy have a role? And can we accept the risks that come with it? Traffic incident or even that the air flight, there are numbers of problems and risks. But the people continue to utilize these technology and options simply because of the big benefit of dependence on this technology. We can try to minimize the risk, but we can never stop utilizing these cars and air freight. I think that is the truth of our life. The Japanese PM has announced today that on the